<laughs> and what I love about these specialty designer packs is you're gonna get a little bit of everything. It's great for sampling texture in a beautiful palette. So the main fiber that it comes with is 19.5 uh, micron merino top. In this pack, we've got marigold, sunshine, Bordeaux, burnt orange right here, and up. Oh, He's, he, was, he was hiding from me. This lovely green right here is Prairie. We also have, it's also gonna come with a 11 inch by 18 inch sheet of pre-felt, perfect for using as a background. And then we've got all of the fun, shiny, blingy stuff like bamboo top in rainforest, silk hanky and copper, neps in olive and pumpkin. We've even got some merino and silk blends in Loch Ness and sunflower. Thank y'all so much for being here with us. We got some other fun fall stuff for you. Next up is Fairy Angela. Yay! 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 <laughs> Hello everyone. So I'm showing you today uh, what we'll be using for the background on today's project. Um, so this is 100% merino pre-felt. Um, there's a regular pre-felt, which is PFM, and then a light, which is PFL. And um, today we're sharing some of our favorite fall colors. There's a variety of colors, but these are our favorite fall ones. So there's saffron, avocado, burnt orange, milk chocolate, and Bordeaux. And these come in, they're available in different um, sizes, different cuts. So you can get as much or as little as you want. And then the next fairy we have up is Trish. Yay! Yay! Hey y'all. Today we're going to be working with our 19.5 micron merino top and here are some fun fall colors I'd like to share. Mulberry, Bordeaux, Sprout, Burnt Orange, Cocoa, Marigold, and Honey. We hope you'll enjoy these and we can't wait to see what y'all make. Next up, Fairy Kayla. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Woo -hoo! Let's get on in. Hey everybody, Fairy Kayla here. I just want to show off some blang blang that we're using today. This is our viscose top, super shiny, adds a really cool, almost like a, you'll see it in the project, like a lightning bolt effect, it's really cool. So I picked out some fun fall colors here that I wanted to share. This one is honey, cocoa, prairie, Look at, what are you? Sprout? You're Sprout. He's Sprout. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've decided. Beaver, Copper Penny, Eggplant, and Bordeaux. And speaking of autumn leaves, I had a question for everybody today. What did the tree say to autumn? What, what did the tree <laughs> say to autumn? Leave me alone! <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn it back over to you, Marie. Thank you, Kayla. <laughs> Thanks to all the fairies. Can I just see a big round of hearts for all the fairies? They pack your orders, answer your emails, make everything we sell, answer the phones, and they felt too. What a delight for us. Um, I'm getting word from the field that y'all missed the intro. There seems to be a long delay on um, YouTube, but we're here. We're so glad you're here. Happy Wooly Wednesday. Today we are wet felting autumn leaves. Um, these are a little bit shinier and a little bit blingier than uh, ones we've done in the past and even a little bit faster to make. So we've pulled out our fine fibers and our luster fibers. Um, there is a kit you can grab if you're just toe in the water and you're not ready to buy all the supplies a la carte. Um, you'll still need the wet felting tools. I'm going to show you everything right now that we're going to use and we're going to make some together. So the kit comes with the merino top, the luster fibers, and uh, the pre-felt. So let me show show you that this is my table and here's what we're working with today so what I have here uh, the base of this project we're going to be using fine merino pre-felt you've already seen a few colors that Trish showed you so um, here's like a burgundy one we call this cranberry this is burnt orange this one is PFM and this one is PFL for this project you're not really going to notice the difference the kit we're, we're including the PFM PFM, uh, just so you know, is a little bit more lofty. It's a short fiber. We don't really peel the layers thin, but I want to show you that it's a little less compressed. And then PFL uh, here is a little bit thinner, 
and it is not something that you could actually peel apart. It's actually a little more compressed. So the base of our project is going to be pre-felt. That's gonna help with a very fast layout. And um, then we're going to top it with just a little bit of merino top. These are the colors that I've chosen burnt orange, Bordeaux, and uh, honey or saffron. Both will work really well. You might choose something different. And then for bling fibers, uh, this is marigold viscose. We're out of it, but it is coming in the kit. This is burnt orange tussa silk. This is Bordeaux viscose, honey viscose, and uh, prairie viscose. Just a little bit of green really makes a big difference. And this is what we are going to make with it. A big, beautiful piece of fabric that's very lightweight. It actually requires very little um, fiber overall to make. So you can have fun making a few of these. So this is the top dressing. And then in this, this one, I use the burnt orange um, pre-felt on the back. And this is what we're going to make, but I'm going to downscale it just a little bit so that we can get through it today. And then we have a leaf pattern uh, that you can, the kit's gonna come with a leaf pattern so you can uh, cut these out and cut out your leaf shape. So we will get to that. And then if you hang out with me, then next week, we're gonna take our leaves and turn them even into a different fun project. Needle felters will love that one. No, that's the only spoiler alert you get today. So next week, if you make these, next week we'll turn them into something else fun, I promise. Okay, let's look real quickly at the tools that you need. So beyond fiber, what do we need? Um, I am going to be working on my a really standard work surface for myself, and let's look at these tools. I have just a little tiny grippy mat so that I don't slide around on my table an old towel for felting, and what we call our nano bubble. It's just like the 16th uh, inch bubble. So the small bubble, it's, it's delicate. You could pop it if you wanted to. I have another towel for rolling. I have mesh. Now this is going to be new. Y'all don't, y'all usually see us with our green mesh. This is a new mesh. So we're calling it our premium mesh. It's much more gentle on your hands. It's much finer and it's white. This is in the shop now. You'll also want olive oil soap or a nice vegetable based soap and some water that can be room temperature or warm. Doesn't really need to be hot. And then the last thing uh, that you'll want is a watering device. You can use a ball broth. I also like to use a sponge, so we'll use both of those. In order to felt, we need to agitate. So I'm gonna pull up the uh, steps here and free just a second. So hands are gonna be our primary agitators. You can also use something like the palm washboard. I will work with that today and show you how to use it. A bubble wrap is gonna help, of course, and then a dowel or a closet pole. This is my dowel. You can get them at the hardware store. I think I get this one at Home Depot. It's got the orange on the end. It's about an inch, I think it's an inch or an inch and a half, whatever, a dowel or that, yes. Okay, then the last thing I want to show you for tools was something, I don't know what. Um, this, is, this is really all you need to get started, okay. I know I was going to show you something. Oh, I was going to pull up here for you the standard. Um, let me pull this up for you here. This right here is the, oh, let me try this one. This is the standard steps for wet felting. You want to lay out your project. You want to wet out your project. You want to agitate it. These are the steps in order. Um, then you're going to full it or further shrink it. Then we rinse it and we block it and it really, that all varies by project. I am going to make a half sheet of this pre-felt so we can get through it in a timely fashion, but I promise it's a very fast project to do. And I will look for your questions as we work along together. So I, um, I don't have a, a sidekick in here with me. I'll, I know y'all are a bit like on a delay, so I'll watch uh, for your questions. Um, Joy says, can't wait to try with autumn colors. Is other mesh okay, Donna? Absolutely, use whatever mesh you already have or already using. Um, I have the ball brush, but I find a small 
spray bottle works. A spray bottle is fine as long as you don't uh, mess up your fibers. Some people don't use a mesh and a spray bottle like blasts water. So just as long as you're not dispersing with the air burst that comes with the spray, that's totally fine. Um, and I use a sponge often too, so that's what we'll do. This project takes very little of the top dressing and we want the, the leaves to be fairly thin so we can work with them later. Or if you're trying to make like a, a placemat or something big, you can make yours thicker. But today we're gonna go very thin and it's a great opportunity to practice your thin layouts. I'm gonna move everything around here and I will show you how thin to lay out that fiber um, as well. So I wanna get stuff out of our visuals so you can see. If you're ready, say I'm ready. Give us a big heart down there. I uh, look forward to seeing all of your pieces. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna drop my soap into my water and just let it start to dissolve. You don't wanna leave it in there if you're doing a big project for like hours because it gets the water too soapy and then your soap gets too mushy also. Okay, we're gonna start by laying out our fiber in little thin bits and we're gonna make little little patches. So if anyone did the artful felt fabric with us in recent years, uh, that's pretty much what this is going to be like. Very similar without all of the bling. This is my merino top. Um, you can see it's rather thick and we don't need all this thickness. So what we want to do um, is take just a little bit of a length and then you can split it down to either two or three different divisions. I'm going to set all the rest of this aside. So it's always nice to divide your wool. Now, um, I did this uh, in our PFM and PFL. Those are two different size uh, fabrics. One is considerably wider than the other. And I, to cover an eighth of the pre-felt, I only used, um, it was like 10 to 12 grams of fiber, so less than a half ounce on either one. Less than a half ounce to cover a whole eighth and in this case, we'll need even less. So the reason we divide our fiber into thinner uh, lengths is so it's easier to handle. Whenever we lay out the fiber, we want it to be, in this case, we want it to be very thin um, and uniform. And in this case, the pre-felt serves as our base layer, so we already have a great foundation. Everything we're putting on now is just the design layer. So let's look here. Um, I wanna show you how thin we're pulling this off. So here's my fiber. This is what I divided it to. You could divide it even more if you want. And we're gonna pull off little thin bits just about like that. So very little thin bits. And what we are going to do is just have some fun laying this out. You can mix it up any way you want we're not going to worry about everything going the same direction. All we're trying to achieve here will be like a fairly uniform coverage of the piece. Meaning I don't really want to see the background. And if you wanted, you could cover the whole thing with one color and then just mishmash, you know, more layers on top. It's really up to you how you approach this. First, we're going to just cover the whole background and I'm just mixing it up. If you mix it up, and notice I'm not doing like full two full layers, if you mix it up, then it'll be fairly uniformly non-uniform <laughs> shrinkage. <laughs> so basically don't worry about it too much is I guess my, my whole point. Don't stress about this too much. You can felt just the pre-felt all by itself into a beautiful uh, fabric. And I did bring a sample here and I'll show that to you uh, in just a moment. Here where this one's a little thin, I'm just gonna drop a little more on. You're welcome to go back over and um, fill in any of these areas where you don't wanna see all the way through or you don't like the color combinations. And we're gonna, our bling fiber is gonna go over the top so that'll help change it up also. Don't overthink this part, y'all, this part of laying it out. Um, and if you're worried about wasting fiber or not liking your results, then start with this little half size like this and, and make the first one and see how you feel. 
I have done a number of these over the years and in preparing for uh, doing this with y'all this year, I tried four very distinct layout patterns to see, you know, how did they impact, you know, crisscross, covering one color, whatever. Everything honestly looked the same. So much by the time I was done, you could barely tell the difference. So I just trust me when I say don't sweat it too much. Just get a haphazard cross patch layout here of your fibers so that you really can barely see the bottom underneath. And once you kind of get that covered, um, we're gonna go back and anywhere where you wanna break up big blocks of color, then do. Just go in and don't put too much fiber down. Notice how thin all of these little wisps are. But like right here, I can see my burgundy underneath. I'm just gonna put a little more of this over that. Uh, this yellow seems a little thin. I'll put a little more right there. And maybe I want a little more orange overall uh, to, to break things up. And then with our bling fibers is where we're really gonna have fun. So now, I hand blended, so some of the methods I tried was hand blending colors before laying them down, uh, filling up with one color and then just randomly adding the other two colors. So everything I tried pretty much came out to be the same. <laughs> so the bling fibers is where we're going to break it up even more. The towel's falling off the, the table. Okay, I'm about to grab the blink fibers. Let me just see if there's any questions you have. Is there an autumn pre-felt bundle? Um, I don't think we have an autumn pre-felt bundle right now, but I'll check. We did last year, and I don't know if we're out of some. Um, glad to see you back. Glad to be back, Laura. Thank you so much, and glad you're here too, Laura Stidham. Uh, the tough part for me is I always overthink. Yeah, trust me on this one. Shush, 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 shush. Your pre-felt forms a nice strong base layer and the rest is just the design layer. And since you're doing these autumn leaves, um, what you want is a real non-uniform pattern. So when we cut them out, then mixing it up, this is, we're gonna cut our autumn leaves out of this. It's nice to have all of that variegation and the leaves not being too specific one thing or one way. You're gonna like the variegation if you really mix it up. So let's add this part which is the bling. Olive green. Yes, okay so I have a, um, let's see who said that. Um, I saw it right there. Shelly says all, olive green would be great in there also. So I did only these colors in merino and then I brought in prairie in the bling but very little. I found like you, it doesn't take too much. So this is the viscose. It's very thick. It's very shiny. Technically viscose doesn't felt. You know the shinier the fiber the fewer the scales. Okay. Technically it doesn't felt, but it will allow the wool to migrate through it. So with all of these fibers, we're going to be pulling off the thinnest, ghostliest bits here. So just drop down, on my whole piece, I probably drop down like two or three greens. And once we felt this, I'll show you everything. Probably two or three greens. And you can pull it either off the side here, um, and you can also mix it up. Like if you don't really want to see the direction, then before you put it down, you can mix it up. Or you can kind of pull it off the side and allow it to web out a little bit. So if you really wanna make sure you don't see the direction of that fiber, then do that. I'm gonna do those two. I'm gonna go in with this Bordeaux, which is just amazing. So you could just kind of peel it off the sides like this, but this is such a small area that we're not you know, dropping big amounts down. I just mix it up and usually put it, um, You'll like, I think what you'll like is how it looks over any of the colors. So we don't want it big and thick per se, but we want enough of it that we're gonna have some sheen. Um, it looks beautiful over the yellow. It looks beautiful over the orange. Sometimes like if it veins out over this yellow, it looks absolutely gorgeous. So feel free to experiment. I think these would make beautiful little placemats. <laughs> um, there's so much you can do with it. Like I said, we're gonna make something with our autumn leaves, but uh, you can just make this fabric and make things with it. 
Tessa Silk and Burnt Orange. I really wanted this color in here. I love Burnt Orange, especially this time of year. <laughs> I just like Burnt Orange. So don't worry about only putting orange on top of orange or gold on top of gold. I think, though, the more sheen, almost the better in this project. And I tried not to have anything that was too big of lines. Um, so nothing that's too, too big and clumpy. We're not going for thick here. Let's get some yellow gold on there. This is honey. And I'm going to put more, trust me, in just a minute. Um, so you can lay out, if we pull like this, you just pull little bits. And you can divide it thinner if you want also. I'm going to get this right up here in the corner. I'm going to get some in here. You could cut it or break it if you want. It's a little bit harder to break, but you could cut it. If you're working on a small project and you want it to be shorter, you absolutely can cut this just to change its size. Okay, I'm going to let that web out there. And I want to put some of this marigold. Now, I mentioned we're, we're out of marigold in the shop, but it is included in the kits. You could also try something the gals also showed you. Or, you know, you could try um, bamboo. You're going to feel like it performs very similarly to Tessa Silk and Viscose, especially in a little project like this. But I really liked this light orange in a couple of places. Mix it up a little bit. I'm interested to see what y'all all would make. I have a very specific, uh, some very specific projects for us to make with it. Something really fun, I think. Um, but originally I was just gonna make like great big leaf, maybe um, you could make your napkin holders for your Thanksgiving table. You could, gosh, I don't know, there's a lot of things you can do with it, but um, you can make name cards, uh, napkin holders, you could make big um, placemats, you could, I don't know, use them as like applique and something else. I look forward to seeing what y'all all come up with. Okay, a bit of bling, a bit of bling. I probably need a little more burgundy in here. Burgundy. I make up my own names for colors as we go along. Now, I like how this looks when it kind of webs across the other things and kind of, you can't, you probably can't tell too much, but when you just put this little piece here, it really just brings everything back down to earth a little bit. And you absolutely can lay it over the gold, even a little bit, a little tiny bit. Okay, when you're happy with yours, just pat it all down and then we're going to wet it. Now I like, I wanna show you this here. So here, if you see this one, this is where I stretch the burgundy across the whole design. And then in some places in here, this is where I stretched the marigold across the gold. So don't be worried about, you're not gonna mess something up. I think it adds a real richness to the veining. So when you say drag this burgundy across lighter colors, I'll go ahead and do that in a couple of places. It's an option, it's an option. You could make, you know, you could sew this into something once you're all done because it's gonna make a nice, thin, durable fabric. Okay, let's put everything aside. I'll watch for your questions or your tips. Um, what was the question? Marilyn asked a question, I missed it. Um, can y'all repeat it so I don't have to scroll? <laughs> so I don't have to, so I have to try and find it and that way I, I can keep felting. Okay, here we go. We have our piece. It's all ready. I'm going to watch for that question of Marilyn's to come back up and I'll give you just a little of you over here so you can see it's very thin. It's not very thick at all and we're just going to put our mesh right on top there and we're going to wet this out. The ball brass uh, is one way to wet things out. And that is, you just use it like a turkey baster. You put it in the water, let it fill up, and then sprinkle it across your project. When I have really big, thick projects especially, um, I like to use my sponge. And I do like to wet with my hands. So I take my sponge, I dip it in the water, I get it wet, and I'm also gonna uh, free my soap out of there because I want my soap um, available. Now, some people rub the soap on their mesh. I really don't do that, but I roll it on my sponge. And I wet 
methodically like this so that I know I'm pressing the water from the middle to the edges. The most common thing uh, when people begin wet felting, or one of the most common things is to not properly wet or not properly soap. Different fibers are going to require different amounts of water and different amounts of soap. What you want is for there not to be a dry corner or a dry edge. And some fibers are more dry and some fibers are more resistant to holding on to the water, so a little more soap helps. You don't want it swimming in a puddle, but I'll tell you, you can always take away water. You know, if you have too much and it's puddling around here, you can take it away with your sponge. But too little water and you're not going to get good adhesion. The water and the soap help the fibers get really close together and the soap is like glue that keeps it all together. Now with this mesh, adjust my little thingy under here. With this mesh, it's very gentle on your hands, um, but you still want to use a very light pressure when you first start rubbing. I'm going to rub across the whole project with my hand. You can, um, under here you see where the fibers are kind of loose. You can leave those, meaning they pushed off the They've pushed off the pre-felt. You can leave them until you start rolling or you can just push them in or you can fold them to the back. I, they're pretty much gonna take care of themselves in the rolling process. We're just gonna, I like to rub across the whole thing a little bit and form a little bit of a skin. I'm really not using any pressure. I always equate this to like rubbing lotion on a, a baby's back. You wanna be very gentle. If whatever mesh you're using, if you see your fiber starting to pill up, to the mesh, if it's sticking to the mesh, or um, if your design is getting disturbed, then just back off your pressure a little bit. Now, if you're not comfortable rubbing with your hands or for those who want to use the palm washboard, you can absolutely use it for this project and with this mesh. And it's the same process as working with your hands, meaning I'm not putting any pressure. This thing already has weight to it, so you want to just be very gentle with it and kind of evenly rub or agitate. So remember we, we set up our little title, right? We have our layout, wet out, agitate. We're in the agitate phase. When you lay out fiber, you wanna lay it out evenly because how much fiber is where and what direction it is is gonna affect the shrinkage. The same thing with the rubbing the agitating, however you agitate, is going to impact how things shrink. And in this case, we pretty much want a uniform little piece of fabric. I'm not worried if it gets a little wonky, um, so I wasn't really fussy in the layout process, but we had a good starting base with our pre-felt. So you could felt this whole thing by hand rubbing. You could felt the whole thing by hand rubbing and or using a tool like the palm washboard and you can also roll. Just remember that we want to be uniform in how we do it, and we want to pay attention to what's happening as we work. For me, I like to rub with my hands first. If I'm using the palm washboard, I usually use it after. I've used my hands to some degree, and then I like to roll. I don't know why. Maybe some people do not like to roll, <laughs> and me, I like to roll. And for those of you who are new, notice I'm always peeling back my mesh, making sure that it's not sticking to my project. I already kind of know it won't, but I want to show that for you. We take our dowel. We put the dowel like right on the edge of the, the project here, and we roll up the bubble wrap, the dowel, uh, the bubble wrap with the plastic and I always have two towels. So this is like my work surface towel under here. And then I have a rolling towel. And that just allows me to keep everything in place, kind of. A, a rolling towel is helpful. And we're gonna roll, and I'll do my best to read your questions, but for those who are new, let me show you how I roll, which might be a little different than other people roll. So I've still got this little trail here of fabric. This is a tiny project. We don't really need to get into the elbows. I'm gonna go like this. One, two, three, four, five, counting to 20. Here's 15, I mean 25, 20, 25. 
and then I give the project what we call a quarter turn on its axis, just so that a different part of the project is sitting down on the table. And we're gonna roll it from all four sides. So what I'm gonna do is uh, look for your questions or what you have to say. For those of you who know how to felt, this is really easy. <laughs> you know what's happening here. For those of you who have been timid, hopefully see how easy it is to get from the layout part for a project like this to like in the oven if you were baking. It's really not that many steps. If you wanna make a thin fabric, you can start with something as magical as pre-felt. So let me see, I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom here. Uh, someone's asking about the dowel. Yes, this one's about an inch and a half. I also have a closet pole, which is a much heavier wood that I like to use. Um, let's see, y'all are helping each other. I appreciate that. I see uh, placemats being said, very good. Is the mesh reusable? Yes, in fact, this mesh, I just throw in the washing machine and you can even throw it in the dry uh, cycle on a real lightweight um, or light, light heat or no heat and let it fluff itself out. I find that once it's dry, you can just roll it with a lint roller if there's any little fine fibers left. And I'm not doing a very good, um, count <laughs> being on here but let me give this a quarter turn which is how we do it we just give it a little uh, quarter turn and I'll show you what that looks like so I'm gonna unroll this get our mesh the bubble wraps folded over I'm a little buckled here I'm always going to peel this every time I do my turns I'm going to go ahead and peel the mesh off and I don't have any plastic or anything underneath here just it's just sitting right on top of the bubble so I'm just going to give it a quarter turn or so turn it once on the clock axis put this back and let's do it some more roll her up Roll it tight, roll it round. You want it to always be round, okay? Whenever you're rolling, you wanna make sure that this feels round. If it feels sloppy, whatever you're doing, if it feels sloppy and feels like it's shifting, well then just either tighten your towel if you can or unroll it and re-roll it. If it feels like you're, um, if you're making something thicker for your first project, first I, I always encourage you to start small so that you learn how to make a good felt at first before you endeavor to make that cat cave or the slippers for your family. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> um, start small so that you learn how to make a good felt first because I started making bigger projects before I knew how to make a good felt or what that felt like um, and it just saves you a lot of time and a lot of fiber if you do that. My towels are scooching today. I lost my big um, I lost my big uh, gripping mat. <laughs> I have to find it. So I'm shifting around a little in here and we're going to give this another uh, quarter turn and I think you're going to be amazed at, uh, honestly, we could like stop felting right now and just felt the rest by hand, but I'm going to give it um, some more quick rolls while we're on here together. This works really, really fast. You'll find that whether you choose the PFM or the PFL, that both felt really well together, um, meaning uh, with the, the merino top, they both felt really fast. Um, I used both PFM and pre PFL when we did our Artful Felt fabric projects and uh, within the same project. So like I patchworked the back and if y'all don't know what that is, look at our uh, wet felting videos and you'll see that we've do the same kind of project but with lots more fibers and lots more colors even to make some really fun things like pins, magnets, we did prayer like flags, uh, little talismans, charms, we made greeting cards. So there's lots of things you can do once you learn how to make fabric, your own felt fabric. Okay, let's see what y'all are asking or saying. Um, Anne Franklin says it's like magic, indeed. Can you embellish both sides? Yes, Marilyn, you can. For this project, I didn't want to uh, 
do both sides, but you absolutely can put, like especially if you're hanging it or putting in a window or both sides were show or you're making a tree ornament, you absolutely can put the fibers on both sides. I would just wet them out and I would sandwich them between the mesh. So use two pieces of mesh if you do that, or if you don't use mesh, then use the clear thin plastic, um, which we also sell. Um, yes. Talisman charms, yes, uh, Gaia, we have, uh, I think we did that in early, I wanna say 2020. So give that a look because we made our artful felt fabric and then we came back and we made some really fun things. Zipper pulls, um, recently this year, we also used them in um, a quilt as you go project. Um, so that was a lot of fun. All right, I'll give you a little look here overhead. I didn't measure this when I cut it, but we'll have the other piece because I cut it right in half. So here it is. Um, it is sticking together. The fibers are not getting roughed up underneath my touch. If you can see, it's holding together as a nice piece of fabric. We can continue rolling it. We could also um, go to roll it without the dowel and you can even roll it by itself. This is a little easier on a surface like our super bubble or something like that that is just really gonna stay in place, but you can roll it all on itself at this point. So just with the agitation, um, we're just still, still rolling, but now I've just taken out the closet pole or the little dowel and just removed some of the girth in between uh, the felt that we're rolling over. So when we're creating felt, we want to get to what's called the soft felt stage. In the soft felt stage, you're really getting to a place where you have a fabric starting to form and you can pick it up you can handle it, and you can do what we call the pinch test. So let me see how, I'm gonna, I don't know if we can show this, how well we can show this on the overhead, but with a pinch test, when you pinch the material, what happens is the individual fibers are not coming off. Let me see if we can show it here. When we pinch the fabric, the individual fibers are not coming up. We've started to form a fabric here, and you can see by the way I'm handling it, and it's not delicate, that we're at that pre-felt stage. When we get to the pre-felt stage, we, want, we can continue our felting, and really we get into what's called the fulling stage. Fulling is when you have this pre-felt, you've started to form this fabric, and you're really getting all of the fibers closer and closer together. So, Fulling is really more agitating for the most part, and there's a variety of ways to do it. Uh, and notice that I'm also now going to the, uh, the back side up. There's a variety of ways to do it. The more uniform way to felt or full something is to continue rolling. Uh, it's like gonna be the most controlled uniform way is to continue rolling. If you're willing to get a little wild, depending on what you're making, and uniformity is not absolutely mandatory, then you can do some wadding and throwing and other, other forms of fulling. I am not trying to make this into a hard fabric. I'm just trying to make it into a nice fabric that I can cut. And actually, I'm going to be using it in a wet felt, in a needle felting project. Now, let me show you this. So, Here's what's fun. So if you see this little piece, it's fairly uniform. If you don't like how something is shrinking, you can tug it out in some areas if you wanna keep it more uniform. Or if you feel like you're kinda of getting a little peak here, turn it around this way. See how we're kinda of getting a little peak? Well, you can do what's called spot folding, and just I'm rolling that up just tight, pressing it as I roll, and then it's gonna to start to come right on in. So this part you can pull out. If you're really trying to control that uniformity, you can stretch your felt. And some people say that you know the stretching actually strengthens your fabric because those fibers then that are kind of entangled are like being pulled even tighter together. So you can continue to roll, um, roll your felt to further shrink it. 
Really all we want is a great piece of fabric that's going to hold together. And if you really want to get things all like a little squiggly and a little more interesting, you can also do, I call this wadding. I made up that term. I have no idea if anyone else uses that term. And you can also do what's called throwing. So we throw the project. This just allows the fibers, rather than just say real straight and uniform, it allows them to kind of go bleep and kind of, they kind of get back into some of their natural crimp. And I just like when the viscose and stuff kind of zigs out even a little bit more. Um, but on some projects, you're not going to want to do that because the, the surface starts to bubble a little bit. You can always iron it out. Okay, now with this project, what you're going to do is, here it is, we have a great little piece of fabric. It's shrunk up nicely. We're not worried about a certain measure of shrinkage. I just want to create a nice fabric that I can cut. We're going to rinse the fabric. You're going to dry the fabric. Um, so rinse it, soak it in a little bath with some vinegar and water in the bath. The, you could just do a couple little splashes of vinegar and that will help break down the soap and bring the wool back to its natural pH. I'll just give you a look. We, we really haven't shrunk it that much. This was the original size here. And this piece is, uh, let's see, I don't really want to lay that on the soap, but I'll let you see it here. We haven't shrunk it really that much at all, but that's about how much we've, we've shrunk this piece because uh, I cut it right in half. So I don't think it was this way. It was this way. Yep, that's about how much we shrunk it. So. Your next step then is to rinse this, I'll rinse all the soap out. While you clean up your table, just drop it in a, a little bucket. I usually rinse this bucket out. Uh, put water in there, it can be room temperature water is fine. Just a little couple of tablespoons of vinegar and put your project in there and let it sit while you clean everything up. I'm gonna set mine aside and show you how to get the, um, the, the, how to get the autumn leaves onto your project without, without really any fuss. I'll tell you a, a way that's a little more effort and I'll show you how I do it, which is no effort. <laughs> I don't think it's much effort anyway. <laughs> Let me dry up my table here. And thanks y'all for playing with me today. I hope you'll, you'll give this a try and uh, let us see your autumn leaves. We share everything in our Facebook group for those who don't know. Uh, put this on my shelf down there. Okay, and where is my fabric? Okay, I have two pieces of fabric here. Where's the one? Here's the one. Okay, so this one right here and this one, here we go. I'll come out a little bit. Oh, so this is this one is on the, the PFL, burnt orange. This one is on the PFM, the same color we just used, the cranberry. I love it, I love them both. They're, they're very equal. You're going to want to print out your leaf patterns and you can cut them, or this, in the kit it comes with this, so whatever leaf patterns you have, this is what's gonna come in the kit. And then I like to just get as many as I can out of the fabric. So very much like we did with our artful felt fabric, flip it over so that you're not really thinking about it. And then this is the fast way, or from, is, I don't know if it's the fast way, but it's like the leaf by leaf way that I do. I am just going to take an ink pen. I should have made sure this ink pen was working before I started. Um, sorry, y'all. Okay, yeah, this is, I usually just use these little, I even use these cheap pens that I get in the mail. <laughs> I get all these pens in the mail, mailed to me and I use whatever will mark on my felt. You could do your iron-on transfer pen if you want. We have tons of videos with the iron-on transfer pen. There we go, we're doing fine. I have tons of videos with the iron-on transfer pen. So you could do the iron-on transfer pen, but I find this way I can piece out whatever little leaves I want, leaves, leaves, uh, for whatever project I'm working on, and I just draw right on my felt. Now there are fabric pens you could use. I'm not going to be felting this anymore, so I'm not worried about that. I just want to make sure that my pen is writing onto the material. Another way you can get your leaf patterns onto your felt, we did this last year and I've been trying to think of what project it was, um, but we got our, we 
ran um, freezer paper through our printer with our patterns on them and then ironed it on to the back of our felt like a pattern. I'll see if I can look up that tutorial and reference it on our page here. If you click under the descriptions here, if you go to supplies, you'll get to our, um, our landing page for today's video and it'll show you all the supplies we're using and the kits and I, you'll, you can also get back to some of our other tutorials. So that's all I do is I just use my ink pen to choose whatever little leaves I want and piece them in there however I want because this has a lot of space in it and gives you a little more room for it to cut out leaves and that way you can also be choosy about the leaves that you cut. And I still, you know, I cut it from the back because then I don't have to think about it too much and um, work our way around. Now, when you get these leaves all cut out, you can wet felt them again if you want. Um, you can wet felt them again and uh, give them a little more of a wrinkled appearance and it'll make the edges healed and a little less blunt. I'm not sure, we might have time for that and I'll pull back up my, my stuff here in a second and I'll show you once we get this one cut out. Um, for the project we're doing next week, you don't need to felt the, the leaves again. So you want to, for the project we're doing next week, we're going to use little tiny leaves. So I might have said in our Facebook group, save your scraps. So if you make these up, we're going to use little tiny leaves for next week's project, like much smaller than this one. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to see what y'all make with all these. These would absolutely be the prettiest fall leaves anyone has ever seen. Like if you put them on a hat, if you put them on your, um, I don't know, your table decorations, if you put them on a floral arrangement, uh, use them as a hang tag for a gift, whatever you use them for, people are going to think that they're just the prettiest leaves they've ever seen because they go way beyond uh, craft felt or even uh, silk leaves. We have a lot of silk leaves around um, available at this time of year. So there's our leaf. Wow, look at that. Look how we didn't know we didn't plan it, but look how that one came out. We got our green, we got our yellow, and then I'll just go in here and clean all of this up and swoop in to all of these little areas where it's not quite. These leaves, you know, these kinds of leaves aren't perfect. So you can have fun swooping in there and shaping that and getting a really fun shape out of it. So now none of these have been wet felted, all the ones you're looking at. And I want to show you what that means because what we do is we say when we wet felt something after we've cut it, what we're usually trying to do is heal this edge right here. Heal this edge and close it up. So whenever you hear us saying heal the edge, what we're saying is you're going to, what you have here is a bunch of blunt fibers that are all sticking straight out. And technically felt doesn't fray because there's no warp and weft, but it can get disorganized and tend to fur out. So if you're making something that's going to be handled, uh, like you could put fray check on this if you're going to apply it to something else, if you're going to make, you know, I don't know, table place settings out of them, whatever you're going to do with them, you could put something on the edge to kind of hold it, or you could wet felt it and firm up those edges. So let's squeak in and try and do one here. Let me get my table back. I'll get my little area back and I'm going to look to see what y'all all are saying. If I can find my bubble wrap in here. We'll just get our, our little table and let's wet felt these up. You, th you don't really need your mesh. What you need is your soap and your water. So we're going to just, let's pick one. Why don't we do the one that we just did together? We'll take this one. Let's just dunk it all the way and get it wet. It doesn't have to be too, too wet. Get your soap. And what we're going to do is start by, you can start by just healing the edges just by rubbing them. You can rub them in between your fingers. You can also wad the, the whole thing up. Sometimes I like to just get a little crazy with it. Um, or you could just heal the edges, but any agitation you give it right now is going to start to felt those to felt those edges down and seal them. And as you seal those edges down, they go from the real blunt to a tapered, a tapered point. So from blunt to tapered, and that's kind of what you want. But you don't have to fuss over all the edges. You can even felt it between your hands. 
Okay. Um, someone's asking, is it helpful to use the serrated edges? Like, um, I, I wouldn't want these to be cut with pinking shears myself, but no, you're just gonna have more points. With felt is different than uh, a fabric with a warp than a width, so I would say no. I'll bring this one back uh, next week after we've rinsed it and dried it, but you can see it's already more flat and more tapered. And I do like to dry these so that they wrinkle, like so when I wet felt them again, rather than dry them so they're flat, what I'm going to do is I will um, rinse this out and then you can dry it uh, so it has some wrinkles in it. You can even dry it like in a cup or in a little setting so that it wasn't perfect. Um, you could even run some thread through there if you want to dry it and kind of crinkle it up while it's drying so that it has some shape. And I even like to stitch them sometimes, whether by machine or hand embroidery after and add the little veining when you're using them just like that. So if you want, go back and felt some of your edges so that they get a little more tapered and your leaf will have a little more character and look more realistic. What you're going to see is once your leaves are all rinsed and dry, all the shiny bits are gonna come back. Now, if your top uh, shiny layer is super super thin and you over felt your leaves then what you're gonna have is the wool is gonna more of the wool is gonna break up through that um, shiny layer and will dull it down a little bit so you don't need to over felt these um, but if you want you can you know put a little bit of a design layer I mean a little bit more of a bling layer if you're going to make um, these just super, super hard felted. So just think about that. And again, you might start with just making a little piece like we did today, felting them as far as you want to felt it, and then see how happy you are with that final result. Okay, I want to see some questions. Uh, Jan Scott says, egg cartons are good to lay them into. I think we did something like that with our, uh, our flower petals last year. That's really nice. Um, Tammy says she could imagine using a laundry rack and layers of cheesecloth to let it dry. Sure, you can absolutely do that. Uh, is there a wet felting starter kit, Sammy asks. Sammy, um, so a couple of things. This project you can get uh, as a little starter project. So today you have all the same fibers that I worked with, a little bit of merino and three different colors. You get the, the same pre-felt, double the size that I just used, and you get five, one, two, three, four, five different colors of luster fibers. So if you want to make today's project, yes. Um, otherwise, what you could choose is one of our specialty designer packs. Those are going to come with pre-felt, merino top, luster fibers, and texture fibers, lots of those, but you'll want some basic tools. We do have a wet felting tools bundle. If you don't want to go all in on that, get yourself some bubble wrap. Definitely get the olive oil soap, don't use dish soap, um, and either mesh and or plastic. I use both, but one or the other you definitely want. It doesn't require that many tools to get started, and just see if you like it. Just see how much fun you like it. Um, thank you, Gaia. Uh, Kay, what about shrinkage? Kay, this is kind of a project like, what about shrinkage? Like, so this guy uh, right here, I'll show you. So let's let's look at this one because this was, uh, this is a bigger, PFL is a bigger uh, pre-felt. Overall, it's a wider yardage. Um, it's a wider yardage, so I'll show you how much that shrunk up. I have one here, where is it? Let me, here it is. Okay, so let's look at this. This one, really I wasn't going for shrinkage, I was just going for fabric, uh, and I didn't shrink it all that much at all. Um, so let's go here, let's go here. I really didn't shrink it all that much. That's how much I shrunk it. Actually very little, and I have a great fabric that I can use for what I want, which is this is going to be incorporated into a needle felting project, or some of it is, and then if you want to felt it further after it's cut, which is what I usually do with all my autumn leaves, is I wet felt them after they're cut so that they look more interesting and they look more natural, so you'll get the rest of the shrinkage then. So you're not getting too much shrinkage in this project, and really it's okay. Um, coffee cup cozy, very good. I see some people, someone said MC1 is not for wet felting. Actually, MC1 is great for wet felting. So MC1 is another fiber. You only find it here at Living Felt. It's uh, like in this little uh, 
thing shaped right back here and it's some of the wool back here. MC1 is great for wet felting. It just is going to be for a different type of uh, fabric that you get finished with. And in fact, our original Autumn Leaves product project, uh, which is still a free download on our website, we did with MC1 and it makes a great durable fabric. You can use it in wall hangings, you can use it in slippers. I always use it in slippers. Um, we used it in purses, you can use it in vessels. We do um, wet felting vessel classes with MC1. It's just a little more um, coarse. This is 19.5 micron, MC1 is 25 micron. It's a little more crimpy, it's a little more lofty. So really, it takes a little more soap and water and just a little more effort, um, but you're gonna get a great strong felt out of it and absolutely worth, worth the extra effort depending on what you're making. I think so, yes. Okay, anything else? Um, yeah, Pamela says she loves fine detail, MC1 wet felted. What does MC1 mean? We use MC1 for Merino Cross and one because it was the first fiber that we ever began to manufacture. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, other people like it. If you need to make your own pre-felt, how many layers do you need? Use two and we have a free video called Making Your Own Pre-felt. Um, please do check that out on our YouTube channel uh, so you can watch how we make the pre-felt but it requires much less rolling. I'm gonna rinse these and Fairy Ann is here with prizes. Ann, did you come to give stuff away? I did! Yay! It's not we... a Wooly Wednesday without prize draw. <laughs> what are we giving away, <laughs> Ann? So today we've got a choice. We have choice number one is the supply kit for today's project. Woo woo! Woo woo! <laughs> and choice number two, if you don't want a wet felt, just want to stick to needle felting, we have got this adorable fall gnome mm -hmm. kit. Yeah, so you can either needle felt or wet felt. We're going to pull two names out of our hat for people watching the live. For people watching the replay, you're going to have to comment down below and be entered to win at the beginning of next week's show. Okay, you got one? I got okay, one. I'm getting one. Okay. <laughs> okay, who do you got, Anne? Alrighty, I have Jane Stooling. And I have Karen McKean. Congratulations, gals, and thank you everyone for felting with us today. We hope that you'll check out today's project with either what fibers you have, or you can check out the supply link in our description. Everything is available on our site, Living Felt, along with, if you click the Learn tab, you can browse through a couple of years of Wooly Wednesdays and tutorials. We even have some free PDFs you can download. Like I said, the original Autumn Leaves is still a free uh, PDF download. Share what you make in our Facebook group, if you would. Join us over there. You have to have a real profile, a head, a face, and everything, a little bit of history. <laughs> and if you make something, please, tag us on Instagram so we can see it and celebrate with you. That's just our favorite part, along with getting to talk to you whenever you call. So we're here Monday through Friday. We're in Central Texas, Central Time Zone. Uh, so we're here Monday through Friday, 9 to 4, Saturdays 10 to 4. Call us, let us help you get started on your projects, and we appreciate you. Seriously, y'all make our day every single day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all be extra super, super duper good to yourselves, and we'll see you next week. Make your autumn leaves because we're going to make some fun stuff with it. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thank you.